Okay, good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Tutorials. And today we are continuing with the adjustment for final accountant. Today we are going to look at a question, a detailed question, and then we'll try to understand how to apply the principles that we have learned into the real exam situation or when you have a question, how you go about it. And so straight away, I want us to look at a question and then try and see how we'll be able to go about that. Okay. Okay. Nanekia, a sole trader, deals in phones and computer accessories at the Chokos Enterprise. The following trial balance was extracted from her books at 31st December 2019. So we have the trial balance. We can see debit and credit columns with three currency sign, three zeros up there for the currency sign. Meaning that whatever figure that you have is in thousands or millions, depending on what we have. So we have drawings and capital, receivables and payables is there. And then we have purchases and sales, 62101 and 122242. And then we have rent and rates, 900 gas and electricity 246 carriage is 200 then we have salaries and wages we have bad debts allowance for receivables 336 at the credit side we have inventory that is first january 2019 as 9274 insurance discounts advertising is also there we have cash at bank and on hand. Investment in 91 day treasury bills at 740. In interest on investment received is also there, 56. We have motor vans at cost. And we have computers. Cost is 5 million. And we have 3,600 as a current amount. Provision for depreciation for motor vans is 8,600. We have motor expenses of 861. We have returns 232 and then 54. One is for return inwards and the other is for return outwards. And then we have rent received of 750. Then freehold premises at cost is 400,000. And we have the balance of 155,883 for both the debit and the credit. Then we move to the additional information. That is where our interest is more on now. We are focusing more on the additional information. So the first one, inventory, as of 31st December 2019, was 9,880, 9,884,000. 9 then we know that uh, with the trial balance, three zeros are already up. And so we can still read it. When we are solving it, we just ignore the three zeros. Then rent and rates paid cover the period of 1st January 2019 to 31st March 2020. See, some tenants have not yet paid their rent to Yamanqua Enterprise. The amount involved was 250,000. The electricity bill of 85,000 for December 2019 has just been received. Halip Nanekwia intends to pay within the third week of January 2020. No records have been made in the books. E. 80,000 Ghana cities out of the total carriage of 200,000 relates to carriage on purchases made. Then F. Allowance for receivables is adjusted to 5% of total receivables at the end of the year. J. An amount of 202,000 Ghana cities was spent on the personal vehicle of Nanequia. This was included in the motor expenses. Then H, depreciation is to be charged on vans at annual rate of 20% on cost. Computers are to be depreciated at the rate of 25% using the reducing balance method. You are required to prepare I, income statement for the year ended 31st December 2019. That is 10 marks. And then two, Statement of financial position as of 31st December 2019, also for 10 marks. So this is a 20 mark question. So what I want us to do is that 
uh, we have gone through the trial balance and we have also gone through the additional information. Let us go back again to the additional information and look at it. Whenever you have a question like this and you read the trial balance, it's always advisable to start your solution from the additional information so that if there are any workings to be done, you do it before you start the main work. And so let us go back to the additional information and let us try and understand some of the things that they have put there. So going back, the first one, inventory. As of 31st December 2019 was 9,884,000. So that is the closing inventory. We have already said that um, anything in that, everything in the additional information is supposed to be treated twice. And so this is the first one that we have come across. Inventory of 9.884 million. We are supposed to treat it twice. That is closing inventory. What to be the first treatment? The first treatment is that it will be subtracted from the cost of goods available for sale in the income statement. And the second treatment for this is that it will be taken to the statement of financial position as a, a current asset. So that is how we are going to look at the first one, inventory. Okay, now let's go and look at the second one. B, rent and rate paid covered the period 1st January 2019 to 31st March 2020. Rent and rate paid cover the period 1st January 2019 to 31st March 2020. Now, this is very um, tricky. Now, looking at the rent and rate figure in the statement and uh, the trial balance, rent and rate in the trial balance is 900,000. And then we are told that it covers a period of 1st January this year. In fact, we are preparing accounts in 2019. And so it covers from 1st January of this 2019 to 31st March of 2020. Now, according to the periodicity concept, we are supposed to prepare accounts for the 12-month period. And so, that means that what we have paid actually covers a period of 15 months. 12 months for this year and 3 months for next year. And since we are preparing accounts from February January to 31st December, we are not supposed to include expenses that cover other period, subsequent or previous. And that is where the accrual concept, remember that we spoke about expenses incurred and expenses paid. This rent and rate in the trial balance of 900,000 is actually the rent and rate that have been paid. But what has been incurred is for the 12 months period. And so the extra three months has been overpaid or has been paid in advance for the next year. And so that 300, uh, the three months period rent will be treated as rent and rate prepaid or rent and rate paid in advance. And so we have to calculate the three month period, the value that belongs to the three month period, and then subtract that from the total of the 900,000. And the balance that will be left is what will be taken to the income statement as our rent and rate incurred. Likewise, we can just look at 12 months over 15 months and then we multiply by the 900 and we are still going to get a figure for the rent and rates to be included in the trial balance. And so that is basically what we are going to do. Now, remember that I told you also that everything in the additional information is to be treated twice. And so when we are able to establish this prepayment, the prepayment is what will be treated twice, the three months period rent for next year. The first treatment is that we are going to subtract it from the actual 900 in the income statement. And that is the first treatment. The second treatment is that because it has been paid in advance, it's a current asset to Nanequia Enterprises. So Nanequia will have to uh, take that amount as a current asset in the statement of financial position, the extra three months figure. Okay, so that is it for that. Then we move to the additional information. See, some tenants have not yet paid their rent to Chokus Enterprise. The amount involved was 250,000, 250,000. Now, this one is rent income. There's a difference between the rent that they paid and then the rent income. If you look at the trial balance, there is a rent income or rent received of 750,000. Now, and we are saying that some tenants have not yet paid their rent to their business, which is 250,000, meaning that the Nanequia also has premises that she's renting out. 
and that she has already received 750,000 as rent for the year. But then we are told that 250,000 is still in debt. They are yet to pay. So what does it tell us? It tells us that the amount that is supposed to be received for the year, the income that has been earned from rent has not been paid in full, but they have paid a part. And so we also need only what has been in, uh, what has been earned and not what has been received. And so we have earned an amount and they have paid some, we have received only 750. And so to get the total amount that has been earned, we need to add back what they have not paid so that for the purpose of recognizing it as income in the statement of uh, income. And so what we are going to do is that this 250,000 is rent income owing and then it will be treated twice. The first treatment for this rent income owing is that it will be added to what has been received, which is the 750,000, so that we will have 1 million for rent in end to be taken to the statement of income or for, uh, income statement. And the second treatment for this 250,000 is that it will be taken to the statement of financial position as a current asset for uh, Chocos Enterprise and Equia because it is a current asset. Once they are supposed to receive and they have not take, received it yet, it's an asset to them. So this rent owing will be treated as a current asset in the statement of financial position. Then we move to additional information D. Additional information D. Electricity bill for 85,000 for December 2019 has just been received. Nanequia intends to pay within the third week of January 2020. No record has been made in the books. Now, if you look at the trial balance, there is a gas and electricity that has already been paid. And so, we are preparing accounts and we just received the last bill for the year, which relates to December 2019. So because it relates to December 2019, it was incurred in the year, so it should be included as expense. And so the, the, what they are saying is that no record of this. We have not paid. We are yet to pay. And we are planning to pay it in the third week of January, meaning that that amount is still owing as at now. So this 85,000 of electricity bill is still outstanding. And we are supposed to treat it just like we treat any expense owing. And so because it has, it has been incurred, it should be added up to what has been paid to get the total expense incurred. And so for... 2019, the first treatment for this owing of 85,000 is that we are going to add it to the gas and electricity bill that has been paid in the income statement. We'll add it as a, together and the total will be the expense in care. Now, there should be a second treatment for this 85,000 and that is when we are going to treat it as a current liability because we are yet to pay. It's a liability to the uh, sole trader and so this 85,000 will be treated again as a current liability in the statement of financial position. Let us move on to additional information E. For additional information E, we are saying that 80,000 out of total carriage of 200,000 relates to carriage on purchases. 80,000 out of a total carriage of 200,000 relates to carriage on purchases made. So we have a carriage figure in the trial balance and it's at the debit side is 200. They didn't tell us whether it is a carriage inward or a carriage outwards. And so we also know that both carriage inwards and carriage outwards have a debit balance. They have debit balance and so we are not told. Then fortunately we have been told that 80,000 out of that 200,000 is for carriage on purchases. That means that the extra 120,000 which is the difference will be the carriage on sales which we also call carriage outwards. And so we have to do a working to show the split of that. And so that is basically what we are doing. And so looking at the additional information that I have read so far, for the first four, they can be done straight away in our work. And so let me start with my workings with this additional information straight away. So that we will try and establish the figure for carriage inwards and that for carriage outwards. And so I will say, I will start with my workings. Working one, I will say breakdown of carriage, and I'll put my currency signs here with three currency up like that. So, um,
coverage on purchases is 80,000. Carriage on purchases is 80,000. And so I need to find the carriage on sales. Total carriage is 200,000. Therefore, the difference of 120 is called my carriage outwards or carriage on sales. So this is how we we'll break down the carriage. We are going to have 80 for purchases and then 120,000 for sales. And that will be total carriage. So this is how the working will look like for that particular additional information. Okay. So we move on to the next additional information. Additional information F, which says that allowance for receivables is adjusted to 5% of total receivables at the end of the year. Allowance for receivables. So that is what we call provision for doubtful debts. That is what we call provision for doubtful debts. So allowance for receivables, 5%. Now remember that this question is a type 3 type that I, I told you is a type 3. I gave you type 1, type 2, and type 3 in my previous video. Now in type 1, I said that that is when you have provision in the additional uh, in the trial balance, but you don't have it in additional information. This one, there is a provision in the trial balance. At the same time, there is an allowance for receivable or provision in the additional information. So what we do is that we are going to calculate the five percent on receivables, and then we compare the final answer with the receivables in the trial balance. And the difference is what will be taken as an income or an expense. If it is an increase, it's an expense. If it is a decrease, it's an income. And so, the addition they're working to will be allowance for receivables. And that is 5% of the two guys, 7,689. 7,000 with three zeros up. 7,389, sorry. And so, Okay, so the final answer will be 384.45 with the three zeros up. This is what we are going to get. 384.45. Now, this is where the real issue comes up. Now, whenever you calculate and you get DCS allowance for receivables, I told you that you have to compare this figure with the figure in the statement of, uh, no, in the trial balance. In the trial balance, the figure for allowance for receivables is 326. And then this year, we are getting 384.45. Obviously, it means that there is an increase in provision. And so the difference, which is the increase, is what is going to be treated as an expense in the income statement. And so we are going to do the working for that as well. Mm. So I'll just say increase in allowance for receivables is going to be, uh, let, let me say, let me try and make it more presentable by saying that uh, the balance brought forward was 326000 then there is a balance carried down of 384.45. So the difference, which is the increase, is going to be 58.45. And so this is the difference between the two. And so this was the opening balance for the allowance for receivables. And then we have the closing balance. And so when you look at it, the difference of the increase, this is what is going to be taken as an expense in the income statement. But when we get to the statement of financial position, we are going to carry the whole balance carried down there. This year's provision will be taken and then it will be subtracted from the receivables figure in order to arrive at your net receivables. So basically that is what we are going to do with the allowance for receivables. Okay. So we continue with our working. The next additional information, additional information, Jim, we are saying that 
an amount of 202 was spent on the personal vehicle of Nanelpia. This was included in the motor expenses. Now, the amount is 202,000, and it's supposed to be drawings. Once it was used on the personal vehicle of Nanelquia, it's not supposed to be part of the motor expenses of the business. So that one was a misapplication of the business entity concept. Now, according to the business entity concept, a business is a separate person from the owner. And so when business resources are used for the private activities of the owner, we have to separate that and call it drawings. And so there is a drawings of 202,000 included in the motor expenses figure for the business. And so what we have to do is that we have to adjust the motor expenses by taking out the drawings figure and get that. And so that will be our entry. Motor expenses. Drawings. Now, so then what we have to do is that we have to go and pick the original motor expenses figure in the trial balance and then we will take out the drawings to get the next figure for motor expenses. And so for motor expenses as per trial balance, we have it's 861,000, but three zeros is already up. And then we learn the drawings. So the drawings included is 202. So the next figure for that will be 659. So this will be the motor expenses figure that will be taken to the um, income statement as expense or motor uh, uh, expenses for motor. So this one is what actually is incurred in the name of the business. We are taking out that of the owner's uh, uh, motor expenses. And then also, we should also note that as we have taken this out, then it's going to be treated as drawings. Now, we should check whether there was drawings in the statement of, uh, in the trial balance, sorry. Yes, in the trial balance, there is a drawings figure. Looking at the trial balance, we have drawings figure of 2,128,000. And we have 202 as drawings that was not captured. So we add that up to get the total drawings we got, which will be taken to the statement of financial position. So what we are going to do is that we have to also show the figure that will be taken as drawings. So working for is drawings. Put the three zeros up. Then we say as per trial balance. As per trial balance, there was a drawing figure of 2,128. And then we add the one, the one that was included in motor expenses. And that is 202. So our total drawings will be 2,330,000. And that is the total drawings that will be taken to the statement of financial position to be taken out of your capital. So we move straight to the next additional information. And that one is additional information H. And the last one, which is depreciation. Depreciation is to be charged on vans at annual rate of 20% on cost. Depreciation is to be charged on vans at annual rate of 20% on cost. And then computers are to be depreciated at the rate of 25% using the reducing balance method okay so that is with the depreciation so we are going to calculate depreciation on the vans and on the computers as well so working five is depreciation now putting your three zeros up the first one is depreciation on motor vans and the rate is 20%. 20% by 16,000. Because we are calculating on cost. And so the final answer is going to be 3,200. That is for motor vans. And then we come to computers. Depreciation on computers. Now the rate is 
but it's on a reducing balance method. Now, what is the meaning of reducing balance method? Reducing balance method means that we should calculate it on the current amount or on the net book value. And so we have to take out the accumulated depreciation from the cost of the computers before we'll be able to calculate. Fortunately for us, this question gave us the net book value straight away as 3,600. And so it's going to be calculated on the 3,600. And that's going to give us a figure of 900 Ghana cities. That's going to be our depreciation for computers. Okay, so that is it with the depreciation. So depreciation is going to be 3,200 for motor vans and then 900 for computers. So with the rest of the additional information, the first one that I read, uh, the prepayments and accruals, uh, I can still equally do workings for them, but I'm going to try to rather treat it as we are moving on with the income statement preparation so that that will be an easier way of going about it. But before that, let us try and then calculate the portion of rent that is prepaid because we are not giving a direct, an absolute figure like that of the electricity and then the income. So we are going to look at the rent and rate that is prepaid. And that one, we said that we overpaid by three months. And so that will be working six. Rent and uh, rate prepaid. Rent and rate prepaid. And it's going to be three over 15 months. An extra three months over the 15 months times 900, which was the full figure that we paid. And that is going to give us 108 as the rent and rate prepayment. So this 180 is the rent and rate prepaid that we are going to use in the preparation of our financial statements. So look at the workings again and then let's try to prepare the statements as we have been required by the question okay so we are going to prepare the income statement and the statement of financial position for chokos enterprise and so we we'll begin by writing chokos enterprise and then we will see income statement For the year ended 31st December 2019, then we bring three currency signs and I attach three zeros to each of them. Okay, so this is how we are going to begin. Chocos Enterprise, three currency signs. So According to the format, we begin with our sales. And in the question, the value of sales is 122,242. That is the value of our sales. And then we take out our sales returns. The sales returns is 232 from the question. 232. And so our next sales is 122,010. So this is the first step. We establish the net sales by taking out the return inwards from the sales figure. And then the next step is to find our cost of sales. So we are going to calculate for cost of sales. And then we begin by Starting with our opening inventory. Now the opening inventory figure in the question is 9,274. 9,274. And then we add our purchases, our net purchases. Now, I told you in our adjustment video, the previous video, that if the purchases is standing alone, we bring it and add it directly under the second currency sign. But if there are some adjustments on purchases, we record it on the first currency side and adjust it before we bring the next purchases and add up to opening stock. Now, in this question, we saw that there were adjustments on purchases. 
And so the purchases figure of 62,101 will be brought to the first currency sum, 62,101. That is the purchases figure. And then we add our carriage on purchases. So carriage inwards. Carriage on purchases. Which is from working one. We got that from working one. So that is 80. And then there was a return outwards, which is also an adjustment of pay from purchases. The return outwards in the trial balance is 54. We are taking that out, so I put that in brackets. And so when we subtract this and then we add the 80, our next purchases figure will be 62,127. This is going to be our net purchases. And then when we add, we are going to get a total figure of 71,401, which is our cost of goods available for sale, what they call COGAS. And so we add the next purchases to the opening inventory under the second currency sign to get the COGAS. And then we take out the closing inventory. So this is where we will make, we will treat inventory, the closing inventory for the first time. And that is 9,884. We put that in brackets because we are subtracting from the cost of goods available for sale. And when we do that, because there is no direct wages in the question, the final answer comes up straight here at 61,517. And that is our cost of sales that we have established. And so having established the cost of sales, we know that the equation is that net sales minus our cost of sales gives us a gross profit or loss. And in this case, we have a gross profit. And the figure for the gross profit is 60,493. And this is the figure for the gross profit. So we've ascertained the gross profit. That means that the trading account portion of the income statement has been completed. We continue with the profit and loss accounts component down here by adding first other income and then before we take out our expenses. And so we see other income. Now, there were some other incomes in the trial balance and the question. And the first one that I want to talk about is discount received. That one had no adjustment. So there was a discount. Now, there were two discounts. The one on the credit side is the received and the one on the debit side is discount allowed. So discount received of 350. So I'm listing them on the second currency sign and then bringing the total here. So after the discount received, we have investment income received. And the investment income received was 56. And so we add that up as other income. And then finally, there was a rent received. Now, in the trial balance, there was a rent received of 750. And we were told in the additional information that the rent received was owing by 250. They were owing us. And so we are going to add that. So rent received. Now, listen, because there was an adjustment on the rent received, we'll do it on the first currency sign. So we write the original 750 here. And then we add the OEs of 250. That will give us a total rent income of 1,000. And these three, ladies and gentlemen, are our only income that we have for the period. And so when we add them, the total income is going to be 1,406. This will be the other income's total. And so we add this other income to the gross profit. And then the total figure is going to be 61,899. And that is what we call our total income. So this is our total income for the period. Then we continue with expenses. We less expenses, but our space will not permit us. So we continue on the other side, bringing our three currency signs up as we have there. 
So right from here, we left expenses. So expenses will be taken out from the total income. Now with the expenses, I always advise that we go first into the additional information and then we treat the ones that have adjustment first and maybe leave depreciation and treat it last or you can still bring it out. So let us first start with the rent and rate. So we had rent and rate of 900. I'm putting it on the first currency sign. And then there was a prepayment. So we left rent and rate prepaid. There was a prepayment of 180. So when we take that out, we have 720 as the figure for rent and rate. And then we also had gas and electricity. And that one also had adjustment on it. Now, gas and electricity, and electricity in the trial balance was 246. And there was an owing, there was an electricity bill we had not paid, which is 85 in the additional information. So we add owing or arrest. And so when we add that, the figure for electricity will be 331 as the expense incurred for electricity. And then we move on. The rest will be have to do with um, the depreciation. But then let's continue with other expenses. So we have carriage outwards, which is also coming from working one, and that is 120. So there was also an increase in receivables, uh, allowances for receivables. So increase in provision. So the allowance for receivables was an increase and it was increased by 58 to the 45 pesos that is basically what we have and then there was motor expenses remember that we did some adjustments on the motor expenses and the final figure we had was 659 refer to your workings all right and then in the trial balance we have salaries and uh, wages and the figure for salaries and wages is 8,268. That is for salaries and wages. And then we have bar debts. The bar debt figure is 247. And then also there is insurance. That is also an expense. So insurance is 172. These expenses had no adjustments on them. And then we have discounts allowed. Now there were some discounts, but the one allowed was shown on the debit side. And so discounts allowed of 150 is also there. And then we have advertising expenses. So advertising also was amounting to 933. So these are the expenses basically that were there. Then we don't forget depreciation. So that is the final expense that I will treat. Depreciation. Now there were two different types of depreciations. We had depreciation on motor van and then we had depreciation on computer. And so depreciation on motor van was 3,200 and then depreciation on the computer was 900 and so when we add what we have to do is that we add up all these expenses and the total figure for the expenses is going to be 15,758.45 so I put that in bracket because I am subtracting from the total income. The total income was 661,899. And so when I subtract, I'm going to get a gross profit of 46,140.55. That will be my net profit for the period. And so ladies and gentlemen, this is how we arrive at our net profit. 
by matching your expenses against your other income, you are going to get your net profit or loss for the period. And in this case, we had a net profit. And so we are going to also look at the statement of financial position. And then we are going to try and see how that will also go as well. And so we are going to clean this and then we are going to begin with the statement of financial position. Okay, so we look at the statement of financial position. So we we'll say statement of financial position as at 31st December 2019 for Chukus Enterprise. And so we bring our three currency signs and don't forget to put your three zeros up there to signify that they are all in million. So we have our three currency signs. Then we begin with the non-current assets like I, I thought. So with the non-current assets. How many non-current assets did we have in the question? We had motor vans, computers, and the freehold premises. And so for the non-current asset, we have to show the cost. We have to show the accumulated depreciation. And then we have to show the net book value or the current amount for each of them. And so for the motor van, we have the cost was 16000 Now, for the accumulated depreciation, there was already an accumulated depreciation from previous years. And then this year also we calculated and we had a figure for depreciation. And so what we are going to do is that we have to add this year's depreciation to the already, already um, accumulated depreciation so that we get the accumulated depreciation at the end of this year. So previously the accumulated depreciation in the trial balance was 8,600. And then when we calculated depreciation for this year, we had 3,200. And so when we add the two, we have 11,800 as the accumulated depreciation. And that means that we have a net book value of 16,000 minus 8, 11,800, which is 4,200. So that is the net book value of the asset as of now. And then also there was computers. So they had computers as a non-current asset. Now, with the computers, you could see that there was a cost of 5,000 or 5 million in brackets. And then we have 3,600 at the debit side, signifying the net book value as at the date, the beginning of the year. So it tells us that the difference is an already accumulated depreciation. So there was an accumulated depreciation of 1,400. So the cost is 5,000. And then accumulated depreciation was 1,400 already. And this year, we have 900 CDs as depreciation. And so when we add that, we are going to have 2,300 as our accumulated depreciation. And that gives us a net book value of 2,700 CDs. OK. And then we had freehold premises in the question. The freehold premises was costing 40,000. But there was no accumulated depreciation for that. And the question did not ask us to provide for depreciation for the freehold premises. And so it means that accumulated depreciation is that. And that means that the net book value will remain 40,000 Ghana cities. And so what we do is that we sum up the non-current assets that we have. These are the only non-current assets we have. And so for the cost, the total is going to be... 61,000 and for the accumulated depreciation we are going to have 14,100 and for the net book value the total is going to be 46,900 so basically that is how the non-current assets is going to be then from there we look at the current assets assets itself we look at the current assets Now, for the current assets, we know we go by the order of liquidity. So we begin with inventories. And here we are looking at the closing inventory. That is the second treatment for the closing inventory. And the closing inventory is 
9,884. So we record that on the second currency sign. I did not close the net book value because that is what we are actually going to use for our computations. The cost and the accumulated depreciation portion of the non-current asset has been duly closed because we are not going to use them again. Okay, then the next thing of the inventories is the trade receivables. Now, remember that non-current assets are recorded on the second currency sign. But then, if they have any adjustments, they will be recorded here first and adjusted before the final figure will be brought in. Now, the provision for that for that or the allowance for receivables will be subtracted from the receivables figure. That is the full figure for the year. And so we have to first record our receivables figure of 7,689 here. And then we take out our provision for doubtful debt or allowance for receivables. And that one was 384 CD 45 pesos. So we are subtracting it. And then the final figure becomes 7,304.55. So that is the figure, the next figure for receivables. Okay. And then there was investment in T bill, treasury bill, government T bills. This is a short term investment, and so it's a non current asset. And so the investment in T bill was 740 CDs. And then we had cash at bank and in hand. So let's bring our cash at bank and hand. So the cash figure in the question is 2,142. So we have 2,142. Then let us not forget that there were some prepayments and accruals, which may also end up as a current asset or a current liability. Now there was a rate, rent and rate prepaid of 180 CDs in the question. That will be a current asset. And then the rent income owing of 250 will also be a current asset. And so we bring the rates or the rent and rates prepaid. And that is 180. And then the rent income owing of 250. So these are our current assets. And so what we do is that we add up the current assets and then when we add them up, the total figure is 20,500.55. That is the total figure for the current assets. So on this line, please don't write anything. Then you come to the next line and say current liabilities. So what we are going to do is that we are going to list our current liabilities down here. And then we will list it on the first currency sign. And then we take the total out because we are going by the working capital way. So we take the current assets out of the current, hey, sorry, we take the current liabilities out of the current assets. And then the final figure will be added to the total non-current assets. With the current liabilities, there were two current liabilities in the question. We had payables and then the electricity owings. Remember that we were told in the additional information that we just received an electricity bill that has not been paid yet. And so that becomes a liability. And so trade payables will come. And the value for the payables is 5,462. So we record it down here, 5,462. And then we add the electricity bill owing, which is 85 CDs. And so these are our two current liabilities. And so when we add these two, we are getting a total current liability of 5,547. So we put that in brackets because we are subtracting from our current assets. And so our working capital is 14,000. The working capital is 14,953. Point forty five. Sorry, point fifty five. So this is our working capital. So we add the working capital to 
the total non-current asset, and then we have a capital employed. So our capital employed, our capital employed is fifty-one. Sorry, sixty-one thousand. 61,853.55. So this is our capital employed. So that is our net asset or our capital employed that we have gotten. And so now that we are done with the first part of the accounting equation, we have to look at the other side, the equity portion and then the long-term liabilities. And that must also give us the same total. And so continuing from where we left off, We will say financed by. So this capital employed was financed by. We start. This is for a sole trader, and so we start with the capital of the sole trader. So the capital is eighteen thousand and forty-three. That is the figure that we have in the question as capitals. And let us remember that there was drawings in the question. We did some workings for drawings. Okay, so the total drawings we had, the total drawings to be 2,330. That is what we did after the adjustments. And so when we, we took out the drawings that went into the motor expenses, we added it to the drawings in the trial balance. And that is the figure we got. And by principle, we are supposed to subtract that from capital. And so when we subtract that from capital, we are getting 15,713. That is the figure that we have. And then finally, we add our net profit. There were no long-term liabilities in this question. And so it is expected that the net profit should add up and balance of the accounts. So the net profit figure that we had from our income statement is 46,140.55. And ladies and gentlemen, when we add that, we are getting 61,853.55. This is the same figure as the capital employed. This figure is the same figure as the capital employed. And that means that the account has balanced. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how we go about the income statement and the statement of financial position with adjustment for that of the sole trader. Now, Moving forward, we are going to look at some more examples, but then I want you to take your time and look for examples and solve, get questions. All right, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and then share for your friends to benefit as well. Bye-bye.